uh, we are live yeah so uh, good evening uh, all the history enthusiasts welcome once again to our uh, lecture series on something about hampi uh, today's topic is vijayanagara architecture and excavations and uh, our honorable resource person is shri tm keshav sir a retired superintending archaeologist archaeological survey of india bengaluru circle uh, we already know sir from his past two lectures on our channel and uh, we also know that he is an expert on uh, architecture especially of uh, kalyana chalas badami chalukyas rashtrakutas hoysalas and vijayanagara uh, yesterday we had started a journey on the uh, dusty roads of hampi uh, and the uh, burning sun and we had come uh, to vijayanagara we had uh, uh, wandered through the streets of vijayanagara with sir as he was narrating the story and uh, how beautiful the place is today we will learn more about vijayanagara architecture and the excavations from him so on behalf of myself and my entire history enthusiast team and the audience i welcome you sir once again to this platform uh, in her you. absence i also welcome ms nidhi katti a vice president of the history enthusiast and all the office bearers of the history enthusiast association i also welcome our uh, or, uh, audience our beloved audience without whom none of our programs can be successful so uh, without any further ado i request uh, sir to begin today's uh, lecture thank you i thank the organizers once again for their uh, interest in the subject and its continuation and uh, it gives me immense pleasure to speak out my thoughts on vijayanagara art and architecture as we see hampi technically we find so many interesting aspects of hampi and uh, the architecture usually people are familiar with it is a medieval architecture we find the development of the temple we find that uh, the different localities have different styles of uh, architectural manifestations it is from a small uh, shrine of single cell to multiple structures and in within an enclosure of its own with grand gateways and entrances so we will straight away go to the presentation wherein we can see it itself will unravel as the sun rolls down the valley we find that there is quite interesting expression of the vijayanagara metropolis as soon as we the dawn the sun rays strike the world heritage site next now once again with salutation to virupaksha next we enter into a time scale wherein it is around 3500 to 4000 c where we find neolithic rock shelters the sites are the efflorescence of rock art in the form of paintings as seen at hampi maslaina gudda kade bagilo rock shelters at anegundi chikrampur etc of neolithic chalcolithic period and you had seen it in this slide yesterday once again we find we find this particular prehistoric site evolved itself into next next evolved into a strong traditional connected site as kishkindha of ramayana and also the abode of shiva girija the site flushed periodically with astonishing socio cultural traditions and also had a glimpse of buddhism as evidenced by the rock edicts of mauryan emperor ashoka at udegolam and nitto and also sculpted buddha panels tabar nayaka pillars 
done into issuing a found at royal enclosure during excavations. So here is a beautiful painting of the Rangamahal, the painted Sabha Mandapa of Virupaksha temple, wherein Girija is given in marriage to Shiva, who receives her hand and he himself offers to Girija a painting uh, quite often it appears to have been retouched as such. The characteristic features of the Vijayanagara painting remain, but the originality is lost. Next. Next. Now we find a galaxy of mighty rulers of the dynasty right uh, of the Karnataka, right from the times of Chalukyas of Badami, Rashtrakotas, Kalyani Chalukya, Vaisala had this famous Shaiva pilgrim center in their kingdom, protected by, protected by the river Tungabhadra at north, laced with short valleys of swarm of dikes, until it grew into the most written, spoken, and traveled about medieval metropolis of Vijayanagara between 1336 to 1565 AD. The metropolis witnessed an astonishing array of defense, religious, and civic architecture. Elaborate, tall, and tireless circles of cyclopean report walls pierced with ingeniously built granite and uh, ornate and non ornate uh, gateways encircling and enclosing self sustained mega structural complexes with independent, well secured enclosures, climbing, circling, and piercing the swarm of dikes spaced and spread over the fertile valley with the river protecting and acting as an unaffordable barricade at north which provided the requisite security to the metropolis interestingly i have a sculpture of uh, narasimha shown typically in animated form here you will see the lion is provided with uh, two arms at the shoulder having shankar and chakra wherein the front forepaw and the hind legs are of typical lion. So it is a unique sculpture of Vaisala period that has been found from the Virupaksha Bazaar when we cleared the encroachments of the bazaar. This sculpture was found in excavation. Next. Next. Time. We have to know certain aspects of Vijayanagara architecture. Time speed and spatial organization were the hallmark of their architectural ventures. When you visit Hampi, when you go to Hampi, you will find the, the uh, with astonishing speed they have built their architectural manifestations spread over at just 225 years. We find you ask, you name a structure that is available, whether it is secular or religious, whether it is a temple, whether it is a monolith, and what not, right from thumb size, nail size Ganesha on ivory. And we find this particular Ganesha on ivory, it was found in the toilet of Veera Harihar Raya's palace, the soap pit. They did not bother of losing such beautiful, carved, beautifully carved image sculptures. Perhaps it was tied into the neck as a tavit of a uh, prince which was lost and it was it found its way into the soap pit of the Viraharaya palace. The mega sculptures of Lakshmi Narasimha, large temple complexes, Patabhirama and Vithala, meticulous stone planning, everything, every structure therein, whether be it the water bodies or be it the water supply system or be it the religious edifices, and secular structures, each structure was very carefully, each structure was properly provided with a drainage and water system, hydraulic system. That is the, some of the astonishing features which gets it the name of, uh, which gets it the tag, the World Heritage Site. Next. Next. Now, we find the monoliths of Ganesha, Lakshminasimha, Badavilinga, lofty Krishna temple, awe-inspiring royal and renowned enclosures with its lotus mahal, stable of elephants, 
musical pillars and stone chariot of Vitara Temple, sculptural renderings at Hazar Ramchandra Swami Temple, Bhima, Talarigatta and domed gateways are some of the magnificent structures of the time, not to speak of the sacred Virupaksha Temple and its painted Rangamandapa. Next, we here have some of the most interesting uh, uh, structures, uh, examples. Here we have the beautiful Bhojana Shala, a structure for the first figure of Bhojana Shala. Series of plates for eating have been lined on either side of a water channel. And here you should know that this is just outside the royal residence and the palace of Krishnadevaraya and very close to the palace of Jagan Mohini. Recently, a huge tank has been excavated very close to this particular uh, Bhojana Shala, which uh, incidentally has turned out to be the most uh, stylized, ornate tank for amusement for Jagan Mohini, the princess coming from Kalinga, as evidenced from the excavations, which will be presented later sometime. However, next we have monolithic sculpture of late Vaisala period of Saswe Kalu Ganesha in a set in a mandapa. Interestingly, the mandapa was the attempt, uh, workmanship of 1506 AD, whereas Ganesha was sculpted in 1370 early Vijayanagara period. He was standing all alone in the sun, make, uh, sculpted out of a boulder. He was propped, buttressed, and the mandapa was built by a trader coming from Chandragiri in 1506 during the time of Sarava Narasimha. Quite interestingly, we find that here, this particular mandapa is called Vinayaka mandapa in inscriptions. One Nagaraja, Nagasetti, one Nagaraja was the person who caused this Ganesha in 1370. The same person caused the Kadalekala Ganesha, the next image. In the year 1390, that is also recorded in the inscriptions. And both the times, a yeah, uh, Ashwatha Vriksha was planted, a tank was excavated, a bell was excavated, and also the Kriya Shakti Pandita was one of, one of, the, one of the Pandisas who led Nagashati uh, to cause these two Ganeshas in the Hemukuta Hillak. Lakshmi Narasimha is very well known. It is a statue, monolithic. And it is uh, caused during the time of Krishna Devaraya in 1528 AD. The, there are dated inscriptions for these two Ganesha sculptures. And it is in the uh, book published, Hampi Inscriptions. Next. Next. That's blank slide. Now, mega temple complexes, myriad number of shrines reflecting both Shaiva and Vaishnava sects, with a small percentage of Jainism well spread all over the 41 square kilometer metropolis, endowed with well developed water system, complete with storage facility for ritualistic and secular purposes, are awe inspiring. Quite interestingly, at Vijayanagara, at Hampi, we find that each temple had a different type of tank structured in the bazaar mandapa so that the tepotsava, the annual fair of taking the deity in a procession in boat, water body, was uh, used to be seen there. However, we find the most deepest uh, water uh, tank is to be seen at Vitala Temple Complex, in the Bazaar of Vitala Temple Complex. And at the same time, we find that uh, the Krishna Temple Complex has a different type of uh, stepped tank, Loka Pavani, and the one at Achitraya Temple is different, wherein people can go around 
move around in the and wade into the pavilion in the center so it was for ganika strees it was meant for the women folk in the achutraya pete who would descend into the tank and walk up to the central pavilion to have the processional uh, deity uh, the darshan of the processional deity of tiruvengalanatha we should note that on the south western side is the matanga parvata and on the eastern side is the rishimukha parvata of the in the to this achuta bazaar next now we find hampi as the valley of temples go to any nook and corner of hampi and its valley you find temple complexes the large broader part of the valley the wide part of the valley has the temple complex built with enclosures which sometimes are from single to double here is the double enclosured wall for this achutraya temple or tiruvengalanatha temple of 1534 ad which is having a orientation of north south and to the east is the rishimukha parvata partly seen and you have the photograph has been taken from matanga parvata next now vitola temple complex is by far the largest temple complex to be built here you have its visual you can visualize this particular vitola temple from the top of anjanadri on a clear brilliant sunny day you have this particular vitola temple uh, complex which is lined with its bazaar mandapas with its enclosure walls and here even the mandapas the residences royal residences of the priest and uh, other community the unexcavated region right to the north side of the temple here we have this is the place where it is the traders used to stay in this region we have this particular uh, uh, northern car street this is the southern western car street this is the eastern entrance that is the southern entrance so we find river tungabhadra or pampa as it is identified in ramayana gently flowing by the largeness of the temple complex is seen at the in this particular vitola temple complex next now we find this particular group of monuments they were declared way back in 1903 as the monuments of national importance in 1986 only it was inscribed as world heritage site but it was declared as a national monument etched as national monuments in 1903 here is the sabha mandapa of vitola temple complex with the stone chariot in the foreground next the aerial view of the vitola temple complex and achutraya temple complex here the achutraya temple complex this is the rishyamukha hill can you see the movement of cursor of mine ma'am can you see the movement no, of sir. cursor no sir no sir ah. we cannot see the movement of cursor okay. on youtube okay i'll explain the temple okay. is north south oriented and to your right is the rishyamukha parvata to your left is the saptajanashrama parvata and matanga parvata and in the foreground at the extreme end we have a small square structure it is the Shiva temple known as Varaha temple and the dark patch in the left corner is that of uh, Pampa Saras or Chakra Tirtha and for, in the foreground is there itself is Kodandarama Swami temple. In the Vitara temple complex we have the temple facing east lined with a bazaar and the dried up Lokapavari uh, can be seen there at the northern end of it. 
and close by are two temples of importance one is rama vithala to the north east uh, uh, north east of vithala temple complex and to the south is the brahma vithala temple uh, brahma vithala which is on the southern side so here we have this uh, rama vithala and brahma vithala temples close by along with the main temple which is in east west orientation next and here we should note that vijayanagara the locally available rock formation is quartzo felspatic granitite schist granite it was harnessed for defense religious secular architecture and large layouts enclosures were also built and each had its own independent enclosure walls so when you go to the citadel area the royal enclosure had its own huge uh, enclosure wall and the palace of krishna devaraya had its independent wall the palace of virahara had its independent enclosure wall thereby series of enclosure walls are to be seen in the citadel area and each structures were well protected and also each structure each group of structures were provided with very good drainage system and water works and massive temple complexes occupying the entire stretch of the valley is to be seen and they were some of them were closer to the gateways some of them are had independent as i said earlier the larger part of the valley had this particular uh, uh, group of uh, larger part of the valley had uh, the group of structures a uh, uh, whole temple complex large temple complex the narrow part of the valley had the bazaar mantapas next we find the this magnificent ruins these magnificent ruins were the embodiment of an excellent bondage between nature and man I was aptly declared and etched as a world heritage site by the UNESCO in 1986. Next, next, man. Now, there should be certain thing which makes it a world heritage site, isn't it? So, as per the World Heritage Committee, the statement of significance was that. The austere, grandiose site of Hampi was the last capital of the great Hindu kingdom of Vijayanagar. Its fabulous, rich princes built Dravidian temples and palaces, which won the admiration of travelers between the 14th and 16th centuries. Conquered by the Deccan Muslim Confederacy in 1565, the city was pillaged over a period of 6 months before being abandoned imposing monumental vestiges partially disengaged and reclaimed today make hampi one of the most seizing ruins of the world next now archaeological survey of india has been protecting conserving aesthetically developing as many as 59 monuments and is carrying out requisite conservation works since 1976 and has successfully arrested further damages and decay of the major monuments the major problems that are being addressed at krishna temple are we did attended to the some of the problems which i will tell when i take uh, tomorrow when the major conservation works were carried out quite interestingly the greatest problem we had to start with was the props that had been provided at the entrance gates which had virtually blocked all the access to the, all the major monuments we had to start from the scratch from the beginning so first clear the entrance gates of the props strengthen the mahamandapa strengthen the mandapas of the mahadwara strengthen the mahadwara gopuras then make an entry into the monument and start conserving in this krishna temple in the extreme western end you can see the wall is provided with a buttress 
the conservation of vijayanagara monuments uh, had started way back in 1890s so these props the uh, british had provided such props at the entrances at the enclosure walls as well as we can see the beautiful restoration of the mahadwara carried out by the british then by getting iron girders from london to prop up as a support for the great virupaksha temple virupaksha gopura the eastern mahadwara gopura of virupaksha temple even today the same girders are left there we have asi has left these girders as they are the first evidences of major conservation carried out for the gopuras next this is the mahadwara of krishna temple now you have an access to this monument with the mahadwara relieved of its uh, problems of, uh, yeah, at the entrance with props and major buttress walls that have been removed the beams have been stitched and strengthened and the eaves chajjas reset and the gopuras which had cracked with multiple fissures were there they were stitched the heavy weight of the gopura was relieved by removing chunks of unsculpted brick uh, inner wall of the mahadwara gopura at the second tala that's how the accessibility now is made for this mahadwara of krishna temple next This is the Krishna Temple complex, which is which can be visualized, which is a panchayatana type. The Krishna is at Egmore Museum, Madras, which will be shown in the next uh, slides. Next, so we find mesmerizing valleys were there, large temples were there. You can see at every for in the every photograph, you will see the broader part of the valley. has the monument and the narrow part of the valley has the bazaar mandapas and the third photograph clearly shows the aerial view of achutraya bazaar to its east that is the opposite just in uh, front of you as your rice ice rice that is the rishyamuka and gandamadana mountains next and we have mythical landscape we have that that is the first photograph is of sugriva cave then we have the sacred center the rupaksha temple complex we have the urban cores the fortifications and temple complexes malivanta in the region then we have sculpted walls and ornate composite pillars and the gateways next Virupaksha temple is the most fascinating important temple at the heritage site this is the eastern grandiose entrance of the temple and you can see the encroachments on either side of the bazaar mantapas this is how the sacred living center looks next the temple of virupaksha is datable right from 7th to 8th centuries to 17th century it is a large complex with two lofty enclosures pierced by entrance gateways with tall gopuras at north east and south besides main virupaksha temple there are many small shrines all around with cloister mandapas the temple at east has the most popular bazaar running to almost a kilometer and around 40 meters in width the bazaar mandapas in the as you see in the second photograph is as wide as 40 meters and nearly a kilometer in length next here we find every early temple in the northern side of the rupaksha temple just we find that there are many smaller shrines of hoysala period and uh, early period which have the sculptural renderings in hoysala style later jalikan style it is to the north of the virupaksha and uh, gopura of uh, virupaksha temple and to the west of the sacred manmatha hunda 
So the tank is in the foreground. You have these temples. Next. This is another view of Virupaksha along with the Virupaksha Bazaar. The flight of steps that you see in the foreground are from the Achutraya temple to Virupaksha temple, the passage. Next. Next. Now, this is part of Virupaksha Bazaar. There is the Utsava Mandapa. Then the Virupaksha Bazaar is so huge. Each Ankana, actually it is of, uh, usually uh, eight pillar Ankana each. So in the front part of it will be, the trader will be having his shop. And the back side, he will be having his storehouse as well as his residence. This is the characteristic feature of every Bazaar Mandapas. And here is Utsava Mandapa. For the first time you find a Utsava Mandapa which is storied. And this is one of the interesting structures at the extreme end of the Virupaksha Bazaar. Next. Here we have the Nandi Mandapa. Once again, it is also in two tires because the accessibility to access the Nandi sculpture, perhaps for periodical cleaning, we have it as a storied mandapa with the usual simpler moldings at the plinth. And the play, pillars are very plain, and they are, perhaps they might have had been properly plastered and occasionally given the usual whitewash. Evidences at one or two pillars indicate to that, but that being of the Vijayanagara period cannot be ascertained. Next. Here we have multi-storied, two-storied mandapas for a common feature at the entrance gateways. And that can be very well visualized here. And also there were different pillar orders. Pillars were of different in uh, Types in long slender pillars can be seen at Kadeva, Kadale Kala Ganesha. Heavy pillars to be seen at the Sasve Kala Ganesha. We find composite pillars called pies at Vitala Temple Complex. Otherwise, the usual medium size rectangular section or square section pillars in the mandapas. And these pillars, they differ from mandapa to mandapa. So, the based upon the characteristic feature of the mandapas, like Maha Mandapa, Sabha Mandapa, Mukha Mandapa, the pillar order also changes. Next. Here is in the foreground, we have the Kalyana Mandapa of Virupaksha Temple. And in the backdrop on the Hemakuta Hillak, we have the Kadamba Nagar Shikara units. Kadamba Nagar Shikara units of the earlier temples datable to pre-Vijayanagara period, all of them, most of them being of the Hoysala period, with a simple evidence of uh, simple wall portions, which are treated with Madhyabandha decorations as, you know, uh, as means of the ornamentation and the exterior of the temple. Next. Here is one. We have a Trikuta Chila. It is uh, built uh, in around 1370s, uh, 1348 or so, 68 or so. And we have this particular temple, which has the typical Kadamba Nagara Shikara. Each unit, uh, each Shikara Tada, each tire is held by a Madhya Bandha, vertical Madhya Bandha. And the Bhitti portion has got a non ornate band, Madhya Bandha. The Trikota Chala open into a common sub Mukha Mandapa and uh, ma, ka, ka, common uh, Mandapa, which opens into a Mukha Mandapa with Kakshasana. And all of them are conceived on this Hemkuta Hillak. The Hillak is identified as Hemkuta by the inscription of Kadlekalo Ganesha, near the Kadlekalo Ganesha. Next. We have one more such temple, early temple, apart from the Hemakuta group of temples. 
we have ganagiti jaina temple of 1398 or so 68 or so here we have a simple structure a garbhagriha a mahamantapa with a mukhamantapa and of course the manastamba pillar in front with a mahadwara the mahadwara and its enclosure walls are ruined however we have the mahadwara mandapa followed by the manastamba followed by a mukhamantapa on and two directions with two entrances and then a mahamandapa and a sanctum on two sides next we have a huge complex so when we go to simpler structures from simpler structures all of a sudden we come to when we come to vitala temple complex it is very huge with all the structures in position with the main temple in east west orientation with a garbhagriha a mahamandapa a sabha mandapa and in front we have a garuda mandapa in the form of stone chariot then we have a even a tulsi brindavana then we have a yaga mandapa at south we have a kalyana mandapa at south east and we have a dolotsava mandapa to the north east and pakshala to extreme southeast a mahadwara at east north and south with a enclosure wall and with shrines for various gods and goddesses however one inscribed uh, evidence is that of the presence of alvar shrines in the northern and uh, abutting the northern enclosure wall next this is another view there in front of you is the hillock of rishyamuka and just behind rishyamuka we have the matanga parvata this is the view taken from masalayana gudda next previous please kindly go to the previous slide previous ah here you see the eastern entrance gopura is split and actually it has been stitched and put together with uh, the finials and everything missing we have inscriptional records giving us the details how copper and gold finials were put on top of the eastern uh gopuras and we found the evidence of the golden finial while we conserved the area and near the booking counter while we were clearing and we were checking up with a trial trench we found shards of golden finial which were the evidences of the burning and destroying of the gopura the eastern gopura had the evidences of destroying during the conservation we had found it out and the golden filly finial evidence of golden finial as recorded in inscriptions were also found in this region indicating to loot the place to destroy the and damage the place they had put fire into these structures as they had wooden props and supports for the inner core work of the gopuras and when the kalashas fell to the ground it was taken out and then the pieces of gold were shorn out and then distributed amongst themselves the pieces which they left which they did not want to take it back along with them were found accidentally by the department in the corner of the booking counter and now they are in the possession of archaeological museum kamlapo next we have the sabha mandapa vitala temple with musical pillars they are massive piles massive huge piles and which have pillarlets slender pillarlets when tapped gently with the hand they produce a musical note it is the shape of this pillarlets it is the weight over these piles 
it is the distance between the main core and the pillarlets and it is the location of the pillarlets that induce such musical notes and they are made as musical pillars and uh, usually it has become the subject of a uh, uh, pride tapping by the tourists which has been now stopped by archaeological survey of india now here we have a kalyana mandapa with an ornate plinth adishtana with a central pavilion with a circular vedika for meant for the kalyana or the marriage processions and ceremonies in this region next this is the stone chariot and we have the plinth the pada molding has a series of sculptures of rati and manmata or couple with their parakeets in the chariots of parakeet garuda it is indicative of garuda mandapa in the central shrine we have the garuda and it is a structural chariot which was once painted the evidences of painting were there and during latur uh, earthquake this stone chariot had also suffered minor cracks and archaeological survey of india has meticulously meticulously stitched these cracks and brought back the original features of the chariot within 48 hours next now we have once again an ornate temples once again a couple of photographs of hazara ma temple sasve kalu kadle kalu ganesha vitra temple complex rajini nasimha of 1528 next we have once again large colossal spires are there gateways and archways mandapas river side bazaar mandapas large temple complexes they dot the entire vijayanagara metropolis next and we have the achutraya temple seen as seen from rishyamukha hillak next this is the loka pavani of vitala bazaar or vitala temple complex a well planned water body with a central pavilion next this slide is being repeated i'm sorry and it is uh, location this is the bazar mandapa of achita next that bazar mandapa quite next uh, this bazar mandapa has been conserved now of achita bazar and quite interestingly from these bazar mandapas we retrieved golden jewelry and uh, various ornamentations which were found strewn in the street as well as in the bazaar mandapas in proper kept very carefully in uh, copper caskets indicating that this was the bazaar wherein the jewelry or the ornaments or the golden objects were sold gold and ornaments were sold as it was also a ganika street street market as per the inscriptions local inscriptions and we find here the chinwara it was the chinwara pete bazaar of golden ornaments chinwara pete as evidenced by the findings recently some scholar had said it to be uh, the pansupari bazaar to be chinwara pete that is wrong next yes while conserving one of the mandapas we found hurriedly buried copper uh cask uh, the container uh, ca copper box of a trader who had covered it with a bluish cloth in which we find pearls gems corals pieces of gold which he had received for working and as a waste material also the once this particular cotton blue cotton piece was removed there were un unworked gold sheets were also found around nearly 60 grams of such sheets were found in this copper box this who conclusively proved this achuta bazaar was the market for the 
market of chinwar pete market as chinwar pete wherein it is said you can see the visuals next slide you can see how it was won while we were restoring the trader had put it inserted this particular between the seat where he sits there was a perforation in the stone in between he had purposefully made in that he had put this casket and covered it and the same the jewel box was found in one of the ankanas and in the extreme end nearer to the varaha temple some more jewelry was found in that found jewelry was found near the venugopala swami temple wherein few gold coins a golden chain a golden bee and the waste band of processional deities were hurriedly buried in a drainage by the temple priest next this is that beautiful golden bee it is the only one of its kind in india the golden bee <coughs> has blue stones sapphires the rubies the opal for its uh, precious stones for its body virtually worked in the form of a honey bee you will see the mouth had been curled into a hook to which pearls had been woven and this this pearl golden bee decorated the bosom of a beautiful lady now here we have another ear ornament with lakshmi in the center and with beautiful peacocks around with hooks all around meant for pearls this is one of the finest jewelry golden jewelry of vijayanagara period found in the achutraya pete this indicates that it was the chinwar pete next and here we find you look at this jagannatha of puri and here is the image of jagannatha at hampi this is that kalinga princess came and uh, conquering of kalinga everything is attested evidenced by this jagannatha of hampi krishna devaraya conquering kalinga no doubt they are referred to in inscriptions in the records contemporary here we have an evidence of high importance wherein the jagannatha of puri has been recorded for posterity in stone here in this beautiful form it is on top of rishamuka ilak next this is the lokapavani of achuta bazar quite please carefully observe the flight of steps given to this particular tank from all sides this is the exclusively meant for ganika ganikas to enter into the tank wade into the tank the pool of water in the tank and reach up to the pavilion where the processional deity was placed and it is here perhaps the vasantotsava of tiruvengalanatha was also performed next we have the pampasaras tungabhadra river is known as pampasaras chakratirtha is the location we have a kodha temple of kodha and rama this is the only place where we get uh, uh, rama lakshmana and sita together with hanuman sculpted and this is the most sacred place which is said to be the place where Ra hanuman met rama and lakshmana next gateways or net gateways tax collectors gate next huge sculptures you know lakshmi and simma everything was one but this is one of the finest sculptures of huge hanuman more than 12 feet standing in the madhava temple near zanana enclosure one of the finest renderings of hanuman who is have clutching a creeper in his hand and he is stamping over a demon rakshasa this is the hanuman who has set out to destroy ashokavana hanuman with the creeper in his hand denotes that he is the hanuman who is destroying ashokavana not bringing saugandha raja flowers and not to be treated as bhima and all okay next 
the most ornate temple in the citadel area is the Hazar Ramachandra temple. Next. The entrance. Next. As you see, there is a highly ornate, tall, slender, pillared Mukhamantapa to this particular temple. A compact, well built, ornate temple. Next. This is the other view of the Mukhamandapa. And you can see the Jagati there towards the uh, northern side and towards the southern uh, side, uh, the western side, towards the eastern side, we have the beautifully projected uh, pillared Mukhamandapa with the prastara, with the parapet decorated with stucco figures. Next. The Ramayana episodes. Multiple Rama sculptures are found. Hazar Rama, that's how we found it to be Hazar Rama Chandra Temple. Thousand Rama, multiple Rama Temple. Hazara is thousand. So thousand Ramas. Next. Here is one example. Ahalya Shet by Vishwamitra. You can see here Ahalya coming out at the touch of the feet of Rama, the boulder turns into Ahalya. Next, Lakshmana Rama at Panchavati, Lakshmana Rama and Sita at Panchavati. Next, a narration. Now we come to Vitala temple complex, wherein these are living stones of music and dance. The Gopras are highly ornate. And you can see I have inset a stucco sculpture of Lakshmi Narayana with Sri Devi and uh, Bhu Devi. Vishnu, with Sri, Bhu Vaikuntha Vishnu, Vaikuntha Vishnu with Sri Devi and Bhu Devi on either side. A, one of the best sculptures of stucco. Next. Hampi National Project for Excavations. We did carry out excavations right from 1975-76 onwards. And major areas were excavated. Here you are seeing the aerial view of the royal enclosure and the horse stable, which has been excavated, which has got double enclosure wall. Now with this royal enclosure wall, the inner wall has one particular date. It is around the 1390s or 1370s. The outer wall has another date of 1513, indicating that the structural activities happened between this particular period. And the outer wall has been dated clearly to 1513, as while during their construction, the gold coins minted for the Kanakabhisheka of the Tirupati Balaji of the time of Krishnadevaraya were found in this particular external wall nearer to the Mahanami Dibba. Next. This is the area of excavation in the citadel. We have excavated a rock temple area. We have excavated uh, certain structures. Now that has turned out to be the guest house for the visitors visiting calling upon the king that has been identified clearly and we have the stable of horse we have the royal enclosure we have the royal residence of the palace of Haryana. then next to it we have the palace of krishna devaraya and outside this enclosure wall where that bhojan shala is partially seen here we have in this annex the fortified nearer to the fortification wall we have the royal residence of Jagan Mohini, which has been recently being put into this pay. Next. This is the beginning of excavation, wherein I started my career, except the tree. We tried to retain the tree as we got the tank. As we got the tank, we were forced to remove the tree and expose that huge tank, which was for, which is found in front of Mahanami Dibba. This is the view of Mahanami Dibba area when we started excavation, the wilderness. Next. These are some of the trenches of the royal enclosure where 
in there is no shade of a tree for us to take a rest this is the excursion carried out to the south of king's audience hall a few views next This is how in the wilderness we started the excursion which stone to be retained which stone to be removed there are group of pillars there in the excavation after excavation these pillars were seen and it was immediately interpreted as since there were pillars in it it was interpreted as a shrine a temple only when we completed the excavation later Even Nazimaya sir recorded it as a temple in his uh, uh, decade of excavation. Then, when I re-structured, re-studied the whole area after excavations, after removal of bark and all, it turned out to be a treasury building, a treasury because it has in the extreme corners, in the one of the corners at the entrance. a toilet why there will be a toilet urinals in a temple so re identification is necessary the structure in the foreground is toll collector's place talari a toll collector a tax collector was there who collected the tax and put the whole money into the treasury next here are some of the views of the northern entrance how it looked when we started the work in the year 1975 76 how after excavation and we restored and conserved the entrance to the mahanami dibba area and the view that you get is the outer side of the enclosure wall northern side of the enclosure wall of the royal enclosure wherein we got a series of uh, urinals for the meant for the servants who were working there next This is one of the earliest most or uh, most earliest stepped tanks that were found with a shrine on its uh, southern bank and this is the stepped tank and behind the stepped tank we get a series of buildings structures rectangular which are identified as administrative apartments administrative buildings next this is the royal enclosure before and after excavation next now we have the royal residence of veera harihara excavated there is near the shila mandapa behind hazara ma temple abutting the wall are two shrines up nearer to the shrines are two small pillared structures which are called shila mandapas the one of the inscription itself identifies as shila mandapa and this particular structure this small square structure had a pedestal of an image which had an inscription veera harihara rayana maneya jagadi tippa udaya marsada pradeshte we were excavating a huge palace in that area and uh, this inscription gave us for the first time the identification of palatial structures in the citadel area so clearly the palace of Veera Harihara was thus identified and excavated behind or to the west of Hazar Rama Temple. Next, this is one of the views. This is the hall, royal court, Darbar Hall, as viewed from north. So the king sits was sitting facing north. There you will see the pillared mandapa, that is Shiva mandapa, wherein we have. an inscription two inscriptions one records it is the area of palace of veera harihara the other inscription records of krishna deva times this particular palace being the palace of elders hiriya aramane kammara so we find that clearly this palace has been identified as the palace of veera harihara behind in the backdrop uh, is the great entrance to the palace of krishna deva raya and it is the enclosure of krishna deva raya's palace known as ranga mahal next so we can see the evidences of burning the palace was burned down pulled down and burned down broken damaged and destroyed you can see the beautiful swan frieze of the darbar hall being burned 
and here is we have the next uh, photograph at the bottom shows the enclosure of the dandanayaka the residence of dandanayaka just behind him is the army barrack and there is rangamahal the palace of krishnadevaraya it is as per the description of abdul razak who says and standing in front of the dandanayaka's palace and behind dandanayaka's palace is the bala ba army barrack and behind me is the mint he was referring to the mint found excavated by the state archaeology department behind the canteen next the palace was found to be having its own garden which a very good water regulatory system and each rosettes are there the flower uh, the pots are there each was inter interconnected and we have the contemporary literature telling the royal residence of the king had at its northeast the uh, shrubs of uh, rose flower that is the contemporary literature that gives the description and here truly to the northeast of the palace of veera harihara we have this royal garden also which has been found during the excavation next now we excavated we had excavated in the 83 86 485 uh, 86 the palace of krishna devaraya it is during the his residence during and after and we found this krishna devaraya at pratima graha near octagonal bath at octagonal bath we found a structure with the elderly rulers the stucco figures of the elderly rulers set uh, rulers set in devakoshtas which was meant for giving offerings for annual offerings for their uh, this in kriya karma so the octagonal bath was meant for that uh, particular uh, ceremony and we found the head of krishna devaraya the body of krishna devaraya the uh, his queens Krishna Devaraya's queens were also found, the stucco figures, and also that of Prince Tirumala Raya. The stucco head of Prince Tirumala Raya has also been found from this particular octagonal bath area. Next. And I wrote an article, Significance of an Insignificant Antiquity. That was my first article on Vijayanagara, wherein here is a slate pencil. Nobody will give a second thought, second look at this. Particular antiquity, they will simply put it in a cover, put the number, and leave it that. And this particular antiquity was lying in a cover for almost 20 years until I opened the cover. I started studying it for photography. Then I found some inscription on it. Then I read that inscription. The antiquity was found in 1983 84. I opened the cover and saw the about this antiquity in 2003. You can imagine the time span wherein an antiquity could be opened, studied, and with only this help of this antiquity, it was clearly identified as the palace of Krishnadevaraya because it was found in the area as per the trench marking in a school area, school built exclusively for the prince. So here is Sri Tirumala Raya. Inscription says it is Sri Tirumala Raya, the pencil of Tirumala. Next. Here is the shrine for Tirumala, temple for Shrine. He was not sent outside anywhere, right in front of King's Palace. This school was there. Here is the rectangular hall of the school. Here is the pedestal. He was not even sent to Hazar Rama nearby. The pedestal itself carries the image of Ramachandra, Rama, Sita, and Lakshmana, and this pedestal has an inscription Sri Rama. Perhaps bronze images or stone images were kept, and here yeah, adjacent to this shrine is a rectangular hall meant as a school just to prevent the child going elsewhere on security reasons. Attached to this rectangular hall was a toilet also. Next, this is the Darbar Hall, inner Darbar Hall of Krishnadevaraya. 
and here is the seat earlier it was uh, interpreted as a tank storage tank but the ornate tank the sculpturing the sloping of the uh, inner edge outside outward sloping of the inner edge and its measurement tallied with the pavilion central pavilion of the darbar hall and it is identified by me as the throw uh, throne truff platform of krishna devaraya and this was the throne used by him when he gave audience to the people it was the traditional typical traditional way of squatting in a truff and giving audience to the people this was right the in the platform over there pavilion over there next and this royal residence had did have the stucco figures of the elders as described by the contemporary literature this is the residence of krishna devaraya next this is the complete structure terrace and storied structure next this is another view this is the palace of tirumala devi the first queen patamahishi next this is the palace of uh, courtesan queen chinna devi to the west of main royal uh, king, uh, palace next we have zanana enclosure you know various structures are there the residence of the queens are there the lotus mahal is there and we have elephant stable these are it was built by sang baikara ramappa around 1538 this is uh, the last structural venture palatial structural venture that happened in this particular region it is the zanana enclosure next we have observation made by a foreign traveler the city of vijayanagar is such that the pupil of the eye has never seen a place like it and the ear of intelligence has never informed that there existed anything to equal it in the world it is built in such a manner that seven citadel and the same number of walls enclose each other it is abdul razak persian ambassador who visited vijayanagar in 1443 see you next thank you very much and with my grandchildren i bid adieu to you today tomorrow we will meet and know about the conservation of the vijayanagara monuments carried out by archaeological survey of india this is in the backdrop with me uh, is the great site excavated site at sanati perhaps we will meet one day on sanati excavations also this is the maha chaitya of kadaganahalli thank you very much may god bless you all thank you very much sir uh, it was an absolutely uh, enlightening uh, lecture a photographic journey of uh, the entire expanse of Uh, vijayanagara uh, the fort the citadels uh, the shrines and everything uh, in between uh, so we are really very thankful to you sir for taking us on this beautiful journey with you uh, i want to ask a question sir yes ma'am uh, so the hoysalas uh, the hoysala emperors uh, they commissioned many beautiful temples in their time and uh, yeah. they had wonderful carving in the black soap stone yeah uh, but uh, in hampi most of the temples uh, they are of a different kind they have shifted uh, the style of architecture so uh, what would be the main reason for that the main reason is the material of construction the material of construction is granite so the hoysala style of architecture uh, venturing was uh, carried out even at hazar rama they imitated the exterior walls with the in that however there the hoysalan art has been restricted to the images in the sanctum and the mahamandapa area as we see in the bhuneshwari temple 
and as we see in the temple of uh, pompa and here the material was the most important aspect element which did not allow them to go for elaborate carving even though the quarry was nearby irane bednuru area and all the schist there the stone was schist stone there were most of the benches of the hoysala period they are of chloritic schist it is soap stone so it is the material that was the reason wherein they could not indulge in extensive carving they did experiment at hazarama temple but it uh, took it uh, plenty of time see that moment at that moment you have to have a established kingdom you should have a well developed defense system you should have large uh, well planned layout of the township so that you can be called as a city so the concentration was towards that rather than going for elaborate sculpturing and carving in greater detail you will see all such ventures is post establishment of the kingdom whether you see it at vitala temple whether you see it at uh, hazarama temple first in 13 between the period of 1336 to 1390 or even 14 uh, 10 or 20 there was necessity of building the uh, city so they concentrated on that that is also one of the reasons and the viability of the stone that's the thing next thank you sir yeah uh nidhi uh, sir i uh, uh, have no more questions from my side yeah uh, when i visited uh, the uh, queens uh, uh, the, the area where the queens palace is there uh, mm. where the lotus mahal so uh, there was a person i think he was a guide uh, he was telling that uh, during summer season they pour water inside the lotus mahal and uh, that helps to cool it down so that is stupid uh, <laughs> that is stupid yes. and so, yes, actually uh, what has happened they had inserted pipes so the zanana enclosure walls are taller enclosing the 3/4 of the lower part of the building so the spire had they had inserted a uh, pipe in the superstructure nearer to the arches so that the air that blew over could descend down through the pipes into the lower part of the arched pavilion that was the only idea they did not pour water over there there was a separate building for the jal mahal just opposite to lotus mahal towards its uh, west there is a structure called jal mahal where in the entire palatial pavilion itself was built in a stone uh, the truck in a water tank where in there was cool breeze coming from this particular tank onto the structure and they did enjoy their uh, stay so jal mahal is the hawa mahal lotus mahal is hawa mahal it was meant for wind hawa mahal then queen's yes, palace is different and most of their structure were very cool if you go into the buildings which are uh, intact like treasury building and all there the inside once you go inside from the extreme hot climate you will feel so comfortable because the thermal action the lime mortar they used the brick inner core for the internal uh, wall portion aerated sufficiently air circulated the even though the external part stone heated up it did not pass on to brick which is a poor conductor of heat air was there further inner wall portion was plastered with thick lime plaster it kept automatically the structure very cool so the even you go to all the temples of vijayanagara period they are very cool even in peak summer because the nature of structuring is such that the nature of providing inner core and external core and uh, the internal core of the wall portion itself is such that that they kept the buildings cool 
so there is yes. no question of uh, uh, that uh, they poured water from there and then they cooled the building then why should yes, the uh, inner art pavilion should be water because i was always water. wondering sir the, yes sir. it is an arched pavilion so there is no yes, necessity sir. of pouring uh, water over there it is exposed exactly. on all sides sufficient to air it is well aerated there is yes, a thing sir. yeah uh, sir uh, our uh, honorary president of the history enthusiast uh, shri nandan yeah. shastri sir has posted a question uh, schist is a metamorphic rock whereas granite is a, uh, a plutonic igneous rock uh, any other rocks in the vicinity of hampi are there available any other rocks as per the ramayana sayings as per the observations made in the ramayana itself that area is full of dhatu minerals granite is there minerals are there hematite is there and other minerals are there schist is there near near by rana pinnur and other regions the schist green green schist stone is there and i don't uh, have any reference to the other rocks being present in that granite uh, a granite form of dikes with the plutonic rock over there and we don't find uh, uh, much of sandstone whatever it is found in the bagalkot region balari region uh, the, sorry badami region apart from that we don't have any such sandstone formations in and the vicinity of 41 square kilometers of hampi that's the material that is available thank Next. you sir Uh, yes. sir i do have one more question yes please uh, actually in uh, some previous lecture uh, i don't remember uh, the speaker uh, but uh, they mm. were telling about the uh, there that they were developing orchards in uh, uh, vijayanagara uh, with the help of the water drawn from the tungabhadra river uh, they had many fruit uh, trees plantations etc so how they in such there. a hot Uh, they so were it was there. such a hot place yes sir you have seen suler bhavi a structure near hampi at the entrance of mariamman halli and uh, this thing very close to the uh, gaalamman gudi nearer to gaalamman gudi there is called uh, suler bhavi mariamman halli uh, malpan gudi sorry malpan gudi and there we have a stepped ornate well which was a arch well of an archer kupa rama vatika the inscription of that particular temple kupa arama vatika vatika is archer kupa well arama rest so there were many such uh, this thing with sugabhadra river flowing and providing munificent waters and uh, lift irrigation system is not present day concept lift irrigation system is a old concept so that using lift irrigation system on either side of the banks of the river they did have many orchards many plantations many uh, these things were there contemporary literature also gives us description and kuparama art vatika is one uh, evidence structural evidence that is there for there for us so definitely what those uh, scholars have observed is true that there were thank you sir thank you thank you so much yes yeah. yeah. uh, uh, sir i need to ask something here uh, suddenly yes, it came in my mind while you and manali were discussing about it uh, so like uh, uh, earlier also as manali told uh, uh, we had a lecture on vijayanagara on our page uh and uh, as i'm working on madhva community i came to know from some scholars that uh, uh the vijayanagara dynasty directly patronaged uh, madhva community and that can be seen in their architecture also but when i visited uh, uh, uh hampi uh, such inscriptions were not available there which directly can prove the patronage of vijayanagara on madhva community so how can we prove this sir are there any sources archaeological sources to prove the patronage of uh, vijayanagara kings on madhva community mm. you have put me in a fix 
If I say the evidences, everybody will start running behind me. This is thing. Well, see, we have many uh, religious structures in the Hampi. See, who has popularized Hanuman? Pranadevaru. Vijayanagara Vijay Pranadevaru is evidence of Madhva community. Uh, yes, sir. Vijayanagara Hanuman is the evidence of Madhva community. Do you need any other evidence? So many Hanuman sculptures are found throughout, in and out of uh, the Vijayanagara metropolis. Even the Yantradharaka Anjaneya, Anjaneya set in the Yantra, mystic Yantra, established by Vyasatirtha, and he is a Madhva community, isn't it? So, if we keep on giving evidences, the whole ma Mantralaya and other uh, Madhva community followers will uh, descend on Vijayanagara and occupy all the possible shrines over there. Wherever Hanuman is there. So that's why I said you are putting me in a fix. See, one thing. There was a typical sculpture of Hanuman. See, after seeing Sita, Hanuman, to find out the prowess of Ravana, he destroys Ashokavana. A Hanuman sculpture in Alida pasture clutching a branch of tree in a plant in his left hand. People call it a Saugandika flower. Less known, less, less known mortals call it a Saugandika flower. It was a flower. He clutched. He a creeper. He destroyed the lake. In Ramayana, graphic description is there. He uh, broke the embankments of the lake. He destroyed the trees. He uh, artificial... Uh, Hillocks that had been created there were uh, plundered by him and all. Those description is there. And he trampled demons. At the feet of Hanuman, in Alida posture, he is a demon shown. That, that plus him holding creeper, it is indicative that Hanuman's first expression of showing his prowess, jumping across the ocean is different. That is uh, different. Virtually showing his prowess, happened at Ashokavana. That is taken as the role model of a powerful Hanuman. And that is the model when naturally he is uh, created by Vyasatirtha and others, the Madhva Brahmin community. So he has to have a plight of hair, the typical tying of hair and wearing a kopina. You go to archaeological museum, Kamalapur, there are plenty of Hanumans with Kopina and other uh, attire, the presence of Hanuman sculpture shrines Ura Mandala Hanuma. The concept came into existence. Ura Mandala Hanuma. At the entrance of every Vijayanagara fortification, there are two shrines on either side of the entrance. One is for Durga, one is for Hanuman. Durga for is Navadurga, Vijayadurga, the goddess of victory, Durga. Hanuman is for the sheer devotion, dedication, servitude. So many facts put together. So naturally and automatically he becomes more popular there because it is his birthplace. Anjanadri is there. So the Madhva community, Pranadeva Ruta Kondradana. So, Yake Prahalada, Rayur Prahaladana, Amshan Kondro. Rayana, Aprahala Ramsha Gundro, Ramandro, Rada Devrundro, Ange, Ramayana the Amsha Gurna, only they kept it alive. Hanuman is also there. Hanuman is the most important archaeological evidence there to be seen of the Madhva community. And uh, you cannot bracket it as some of the scholars will be of the opinion, no, you cannot bracket it as uh, Madhva community alone. A Hanuman is universal. Accept it. Let us go with it. Monkeys are universal, isn't it? Hey, Nago, monkeys are universal. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.
<laughs> so there is uh, there is one more question by Ashrin yeah. Nandan Shastri sir. Yeah. What kind of Urdhva Pundra is on your forehead, sir? Uh, he is curious to know. Sir wants to know the kind of tilak which. Ah, the name. You want? I am an archaeologist, basically. If you want to know me as to who I am, please hear to listen to my pravara. Angi rasa pauru kusutrasa dasiva trayar sheya pravara nita. षटमर्षण गोत्रोद्भव से ये मेगालिथिक बरियल इज आल्सो द सेम ये नियोलिथिक बरियल इज आल्सो द सेम ये मॉडर्न बरियल फाउंड ड्यूरिंग द एक्सकवेशंस इज आल्सो द सेम एट कृष्णा टेंपल आई हैव नो कास्ट सर आई हैव इफ यू वांट मी टू नो इट इज श्री नामा तिरुनामा श्री वैष्णव फोरहेड मार्क ऑफ अ मैरिड ब्राह्मण and uh, thank you sir without this you cannot identify keshwa sir it is the identification mark of keshwa sir for all these his life throughout his life i don't mind carrying this flag of krishna on my forehead it is kasturi tilakam lala tapalake vakshastre shobhi kaustavam goddess durga is there nasa gre navamukti ekam i don't have it in the ear i don't have it in the nose <laughs> nasa gre navamukti ekam karatale veenum kare kankanam my voice is venu and kare kankanam speaking about my country speaking about my culture speaking about my religion speaking about by our on our people is my kankana you know and i am keshava Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The first Vishnu. Yes. Thank yes. you. Sir. Thank you so much. Mm. Uh, so there are no more questions in today's session. I Thank think uh, we can end today. Today's session we can end here, and uh, uh, we can all meet tomorrow again. Sure. Give me the inputs, and I will send you the yes, conservation sir. this thing now itself. Okay. To you. Okay. Yes. Thank sir. you. Bye bye. Yes, See you. Thank you so much, sir. Um, Nidhi, yeah. uh, can you please propose a vote of thanks? Yes, sure. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for doing the second lecture uh, in the series. Uh, something about Hampi. Uh, again, as yesterday's lecture, it uh, gave us more uh, enlightenment about Hampi, and we are very enthusiastic to attend tomorrow's lecture too. Daily, we are getting to know something new about Hampi. uh and we realized that it's never ending story thank you so much sir for making us understand this thank you sir thank you so much bye bye thank you may god bless you both thank you thank you sir thank you so Adieu. much adieu adieu and i also thank uh, the president of history enthusiast miss manali momaya for being the uh, host of this session thank you manali thank you so much let me know how many thank people you. have attended Huh? Sure, sir. Yes. After yes, the yeah. uh, session ends, I will uh, let you know, sir. Thank you so much. Please. Uh, Please. Thank you to Nidhi and all the audience too. Uh, I thank all the audience who actively participated throughout this session. Uh, if you like the video, please click the like button. And if you feel it productive, share with your friends, colleagues, neighbors, students, anyone you, uh, whom you love and care about. and if you have not yet subscribed our channel please click the bell icon and subscribe to our channel thank you so much have a good if night if you want keshava <laughs> if you want to listen to keshava on various aspects of karnataka archaeology press the bell icon yes okay ma may god bless you thank you comment bye yes thank you sir bye Uh, we are yeah, signing yeah. off here. Do do comment any queries or any further suggestions in the comment section. 
uh, signing off here. See you all tomorrow. Have a nice day. Bye.